Yeah, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and we're about to go do the first taxi test on the Sopwith Pup here. Uh, we finally got it uh, running uh, to satisfaction on the ramp with the tail tied down, so we'll see what happens. It's got a little bit of a steerable tail skid, I got a little bit of a crosswind, so we'll see what happens. Also, we'll put a little bit of a seat belt on. Okay, let's see. The fuel is on. Tanks are off. We got the little uh, squirter. Uh, next one, Jeff. My right knee's got some weird thing on. Okay. Go. Oh, oh, so that's how I really feel about you. It was, yeah, I understand. It was inevitable. Go. Oh, shit. Okay. Twice. Twice. What was that? Man, I had to prop my head. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe uh, we had a spark there for a second. It'll run out. <laughs> Exactly the same. <laughs> right. Go ahead and make it hot. It's hot. Here we go. things and the things are you got to know if there's a crosswind you always got to start your turn from the downwind side and go into the wind otherwise you're going to go off the runway but anyway it's not there's just about a quartering crosswind today so that worked out good yeah so basically i think what needs to happen is we need to check the final rigging check the what tightness of the wires and get it signed off 
Yeah. FA is coming out next week and go fly. Come up with a new way to get out. <laughs> ah, that's the sporting way. The sporting way. <laughs> Okay, good. I'll let you look at it. So what he's doing is he's lining that up over on the rib there. The rib's a solid piece. And then there's a little cutout in the back that slips out and lays on the fabric on both sides of the rib in the back. We designed these for the Benoit. Normally, if we designed it for this specific airplane, we would have designed them in, you know, to, to fit this, because right now, all we can do is check this one against one, two, three ribs out. Ideally, we would check at the one outside of the uh, interplane struts there. But the problem is, is our little deal where it's laying on the back is where the aileron is. So if you look up there, you can see that wouldn't do us any good. That's pretty, that's pretty good for a pup. This tips down, it's got a little bit of wash in. Let me just look at that. Yeah, this has got a little bit of wash in, so I would just say we, well, we already did those. I, will, I definitely want those tighter, okay? So cut these anyway, and let's just tweak this a little bit. Right now, these two wings are drooped slightly down, so if you look down the leading edge this way, if, if you look at the two things on the deal, it's slightly off like this, so actually, if this is you, the, the, the wing tip is pointed down a little bit, okay? So we're just trying to line them up a little bit. Sometimes you actually rig an airplane with a little bit of that, but we're just gonna rig it flat. And so if it's down like that, what I wanna do is I wanna pull it up like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this wire right now, because these wires are a little bit loose. See, and this one's going to feel tighter than these two because you got two wires pulling the same load as the one. You want to hit the wire like that and it'll, it'll settle in. Let's just go one more and we'll call it quits. That's, that's pretty damn good. You know, we're going to want to go around and check check all the uh, the wires for I mean that this one's not perfect all right all right this one this one's washed in as well so the engine spins this way. The engine spins this way, so the airplane's gonna wanna go this way. So if we had a little bit of down over here, it wouldn't hurt, okay? Because it would compensate for the torque. There's very little. There's this story about a sock with camel would turn on a dime one way, and it wouldn't turn, hardly turn the other way. Total bullshit. You can't even tell. I was, when I was flying a, one of these pups in the past, You'd sit there, the controls are so light because you're only going 80, 85 miles an hour. And if you take your feet off the rudder bar, because it's just a bar, okay, it's pivoted in the middle. And if you take your, put the feet flat so the rudder's not moving, and if you pull the stick back, the nose goes up and to the right because it's, uh, you know, precessing or whatever, you know, like a bike tire. If you tilt, turn it 90 degrees, it reacts 90 degrees later, like a helicopter blade. So if you pull the stick back, the nose goes up and to the right. If you push the stick forward, the nose goes down and to the left. If you don't touch the rudder, if you keep the rudder straight. But the reality is the controls are so light when you're flying around, you never feel any difference. So that whole stop with camel, total BS. Okay, how's that It's pretty damn close. Hold 
See how that settled in right there and the wires got loose? So let's go another one here. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, you know, the only thing, just, you know, so we'll button those little things up and then uh, just, you know, have somebody else walk over and just make sure everything's safety and, okay. you know, and should be cool. Hmm. Progress. If everything feels good and uh, I go flat, I'll take off on the long runway, but I want somebody in the Jeep in case I, I need help if I have a problem somewhere, okay? Hold, hold the valve wide open, use the finger. Five squirts, let it snap shut. Okay, you know, you know to go around two, yes. Okay, what do we got? All right, that's the one I want right there. Where'd you oh, say off? Uh, okay, we're just... Gonna gas it up here. What I'll do is I'm gonna yeah. let it warm up, okay? And, and then I want to do a like a full throttle thing, so I'll need two guys on the tail. Okay. Okay. Two. And one, two more for luck. That's good. Ready? Ready. Make it hot. It's hot. Oh, do you want to be get, let me get some fuel first. Dripping out the bottom. You got fuel coming out the bottom. Okay, just tell me when it quits. Okay, it's quit. Quit? Okay, let her rip. She's hot. Contact. That was off. Okay, make it hot. It's hot.
okay, the cowling wasn't buttoned down properly. Big wow. Line wire got the rest of it on the other side. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I think that's the first time I've ever believed in your friends, Bill. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Well, bottom line is the cow wasn't fucking tight. Now, what the hell? I mean, uh, Gene had one on a camel blow off on him. <coughs> there you go. You know, the one thing, this that has no backup, you know. Uh, on the triplane, we have a second screw, and that's the only thing that holds that thing on is that cable. Yeah, I took out the prop, too. Well, anyway, push it back and let's get some pictures. Wow. <laughs> I think they can save the prop. I think they can slice off the back of it, Hermit. Yeah. The piece on. God. I mean, God, look at this, man. I mean, God almighty. Well, it's a good thing you were on final. I wasn't on final. I was coming in for a buzz job. <laughs> you gotta admit, that was pretty freaking spectacular. <laughs> Found it spectacular. God dang, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought the freaking engine had fallen off, and I did because I didn't see any of this until, you know, because well, my focus was looking at the runway and thank, thank freaking God I got a runway ahead of me, and then I knew there was a crosswind, and this thing is no uh, jewel in a crosswind because it's got so much dihedral, and uh, you know, so at the end there, I was hard on the rudder and. You know, fortunately, it's got a little bit of a ter steerable tail skid, but anyway, couldn't plan that any better. Over and out. It's time for some naked in Jamaica rum. Yeah. The cable, I didn't, well, I don't know. I mean, the cowling couldn't go back because the Struts would have stopped it. Boy, you really got under the. Could have damaged the engine there. Yeah, I mean, look yeah. at the rockers dry. Engine was free and happy as they were like. Thought the damage in the engine would have wouldn't throw up on it. That's all turning around. Yeah. Did you the, see that, Andy? The, the, all the rockers. All the rockers are all turning. You know, the cows, the cow hit the roof. See that? You think there's damage to the engine from that? Unlikely. Gene had the same thing happen. There's nothing I can't. Did you? Yeah, the nothing cannon I come off say. in the air. Yeah. It's the same identical thing. Yeah, just the engine tears the cowl up, cowl up, throws it all over the place. So if there's any saving grace anywhere, it didn't get the induction tubes because those are not easy to deal with. Oh, what an astonishingly lucky piece of timing. How much time do we have? I bet you if you grabbed it, you could turn it back straight again. The only problem is it'll have ripped their stakes and it will have ripped all the stakes out. But they can be redone. No, I would think that would have kept running. Broke the safety wire. Yeah. So we've lost the center section. We've lost that one. Another damage we got here. Not a good, not a good day. God, this thing is so freaking pitch sensitive. It just, it just goes along like this. It's smooth, you know, it's kind of wallowy. With, and I, I mean, if it flies exactly the way I remember it. Um, and the ranch was running, it's great. Watch it behind you. Yeah. Survived the crash, not the fall. <laughs> Switch is off, fuel's off. I had the fuel off by the time I hit the runway. 
Yeah, so what happened was when I took off, I was, yeah, I was keeping the throttle way back, just kind of a comfortable cruise. Something just said, you know, this, this feels comfortable. So I was slowing it down. I wasn't chas chasing an albatross or anything. So anyway, so I just cruising around, just checking things, looking for fuel leaks and stuff. And, uh, you know, trying to stay reasonably within a distance where I could land it if I had to. <clears throat> Although it slows down really fast, I found out. And then I went out uh, over to the east and I came around, I was gonna make a little, you know, a pass, but not a fast pass. But when I started to put the nose down here, uh, apparently what happened was I was marginally on, there's a cable that runs around the cowan that holds it in the back. And the only thing that I can, what, what happened was it's got a split in the bottom and it, it didn't get tight enough. So what happened was when I started increasing airspeed and the pressure started building up in the cowl, there's a little indentation, you know, that kind of goes like this, that the cable lays in like this and goes around and squeezes everything down. It wasn't tight enough and basically the lip bumped out of the deal. I think the leading edge, the nose of the cowl came back, uh, hit the engine. <laughs> That's all she wrote. Anyway, it nicked the back of the prop. And uh, I was, thank God, I was just right over this damn runway. So, you know, uh, immediately uh, put the nose down, had the runway. Thank God I had the runway right under me. Basically, shut the fuel off, shut the mags off. And, uh, you know, in case it would have flipped or something like that. And uh, when I uh, uh, went ahead and... Uh, I, I think I was trying to do a wheel landing. I'll have to go back and do the deal there, but I knew there was a crosswind. This thing's notorious in a crosswind because it's got so much dihedral of lifting a wing if it gets too slow. And I think in the end it was kind of almost a three-point landing. But uh, by that time, man, I was hard rudder because it was wanting to swing into the wind. Um, and, you know, anyway, keeping the ailerons down. Anyway, so anyway, everything worked out good and everything's safe, but uh, obviously we've got an airplane to rebuild. Over and out.